Luke E. Eddie. What's happening? <laughs> I like how you're, how you knew, but how are you doing, man? I am doing very well, thank you. Good, good, good. I appreciate you doing this, and I got a, I got a shirt for you. Okay, well, I appreciate that. It's about time. You, you <laughs> kind of, kind of left me out in the dark for a while. You got your other, your other go-tos first, I suppose. That's all right. I'll remember that, Luke. You always do, man. We'll we'll leave out the the fact that it's about an hour and thirty-five minutes to get to your house, but or to your gym. But you know what? When I got when I got something super cool, I'll hit you up first. I'll do one right, of those exclusives right. for you because you said that, and I know you'll give me shit for like five years about it. So <laughs> I'll oh, don't get worry, you. You, you you won't ever forget this. I see everybody else wearing them. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll remember. Okay, I'm well, gonna remember. I'm gonna t- you know I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna take a picture. <laughs> <You're> gonna, <laughs> um, I'm playing. No, I know you're playing. I, that's why I appreciate you, man, because you're. Uh, you got a good sense of humor, but I, I got to say, I'm jealous of you. You were in that locker room for one of the most badass fights ever. And just, yeah. I wanted you to come on just to share some behind the scenes. What's it like? How tense was it? All that stuff. Hmm. Are we being recorded right now? Yeah, of course. You know, but no, we can, we can. No, uh, I, I, yeah. I, well, I didn't know if I it was going to have to like restart my story or not. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, no, uh, you know what, it, it, so, you know, I, I had just, um, uh, got finished working another fight for, uh, Vin, I was in the corner for Vincent Jennings, um, you know, a fight that I felt that he really could have won if he, like, would have put himself out there, but, you know, it's a good learning experience for him. Um, so right after that, you know, I packed up all my stuff and then headed over to Andre's room. And, you know, it was, it, you know, in, it was pretty, it was chill. Everybody's relaxing and kind of, you know, everybody knew that, that the, you know, Andre had a, a monumental task at hand, right? Um, and I didn't, I didn't sense any, any, uh, nerves uh, or any unusual nerves is always you know i at least i always felt nerves before my fight I, you know i don't know i i'm not you know I, i'm not a mind reader and i don't know if andre you know gets particularly nervous but i, I would think that it's only human nature to you know to have some nerves right and it might it might not be Nerves uh, for getting injured or nerves of, you know, getting knocked out or anything of that nature. Just like, you you know, you're going to get out there and you're going to fight another man in front of, you know, thousands of people in the arena and millions of people watching, you know, all around the world. So, you know, it's only natural for, you know, a human being to, to be nervous, a little nervous about that. Um, now th- this fight is, you know, a bigger fight than, than normal, a bigger fight than either one of them have, have had in their careers. I did feel that Andre probably had more experience in that type of thing, uh, in this type of environment being the winner of the super six and then you know, fighting Chad Dawson after that uh, and, you know, going back even further, you know, winning an Olympic gold medal. So I felt on that, on, you know, a stage such as that, um, that, you know, Andre had more experience and he would, and he'd probably be more prepared for it. Now, I did, I did seem, I did sense like a, a little more seriousness than, than, you know, in the previous fight. Uh, against uh, Paul Smith and you know against Barrera, Sullivan Barrera, and in the last one, um, I can Alexander I can Brand. Him. Yeah, against Alexander Brand. So you know there is more seriousness because there's you know uh, a much more dangerous person in, in you know standing in front of them. 
Um, so, you know, people were kind of, yeah, everybody was more, uh, more, you know, I, I wouldn't say like concentrated, but I mean, everybody was, you know, really more uh, focused on, on what was going to come next, right? Um, so, you know, I was in there for, you know, about half hour, 45 minutes, and then I went over into Kovalev's dress, um, you know, dress room to, to watch him, to watch him get wrapped up. Oh, with, with the blue yeah. AW shirt on? Uh, yeah. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Well, I was just, I, was I didn't know if you were doing the old, the old sneaky guy. You might take the shirt off and walk in the dressing room. Oh no, no, no! They, they, they knew that I was, you know, part of, part of uh, Andre's team. You know that I was. Yeah, you know, it could because they sent somebody over to watch. Oh, Andre for the hand wrap. wrap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, it, it, it wasn't like I was trying to be super undercover. Now, um, I did think that Kovalev seemed a little on edge and it did seem like John David Jackson was a little on edge. Now, now I could have been read more into that because, you know, um, you know, when, when the fight started, you know, Kovalev, you know, definitely seemed, you know, the one that, that, you know, was ready to go right away from the beginning. There wasn't, you know, much of a feeling out process for him. Um, and, you know, I, and, and part, part, you know, I mean, you know, a, a big thing why, I, you know, I told everybody, you know, I, I felt that Kovalev's best chance is early. I mean, other than, you know, he, he seems in, in his past fights to, you know, get a little tired at the end and he's always strongest in the beginning. But, you know, my biggest thing was uh, Kovalev's jab is, is, it's like vicious, right? So, you know, just going back and look at, looking at some of Kovalev's past fights, and there's a lot of times he would paw with the right hand, kind of use the right hand as the range finder and step in hard with the power jab, and he would, he would knock guys down with that. And, you know, I, you know, it, it, it takes, you know, it takes a round, few rounds to kind of get somebody's range and timing and, you know, kind of pick up on little quirks. Um, and I felt like that, you know, might be something that, that would, you know, that would kind of put Andre on its heels early. So I, that, that was the reason why I felt that Coppola's best chance was early. And... In the in the very first round, you know, Andre came in hard with the jab, and Kovalev stuck his jab out at the same time, and you know, Andre kind of you know got a little, you know, got a little buckled from that, and uh, I was like, ah, man, and, you know, I didn't need, you know, I didn't tell anybody that that's what I was worried about, but you know, I just was kind of, all right, you know, my my worst my worst nightmare has now been confirmed, right? So, you know, with that being said and, and that happening, you know, I could, you know, like I, it, what it would do to me is I would really start concentrating on how to take that jab away from him. And I would try to counter it with the right hand over the top, just like Andre did. And he got caught with a short right hand before he can get his counter shot over. And that was the cause of the knockdown, right? Now, I... You know, and I when I saw the the replay of that, and I looked at it and going, okay, you know, I'm glad that, you know, it, that could have been serious trouble, because it, it, if you notice, Kovalev didn't really he, you know, it was kind of smothered, so he didn't really get a chance to turn it over, so it didn't really catch Andre flush, but you know, caught him enough to hurt him and knock him down. Now, he you know, like he said, he wasn't hurt. It was a or really hurt. It was a flash knockdown, but. You know, flush knockdown. You know, bad knockdown. Knockdown to me is a knockdown, and he, and he was still, you know, kind of not 100% there for that round or the round after. Um, 
But as, as the fight progressed, you know, I could see him getting the timing and, you know, not uh, the jab. You know, Kovalev's jab was, you know, he was able to defend it much better and slip inside it and, you know, work the body, which, which I, you know, which was the reason why the momentum swung in his favor as the fight progressed. And you had it for Ward, the fight? You know, I, I, I still have not watched the replay. And look, I, watching the fight that night, I thought that Andre won 5 through 12. And I, I kept telling everybody, there was one round in there. I don't remember which one it was. Because, you know, it, it, the, the, I mean, the fight was... You know, once the fourth round ended, and I was like, man, he got really, he, he dug, and, you know, he kind of dug himself a little hole. He's got to battle back here. So, you know, just the nerves and me wanting him to do so well, um, you know, I just kind of was losing track of time. And so I didn't really, I didn't re- really remember what round it was in, but, I, you know, I, I knew that there was one round that he might not have won, whether it was like, I couldn't remember if it was 9, 10, or 11, right? So I told everybody, I, you know, I thought Andre won from the fifth round on, and there was one round in there, whether it was 9, 10, or 11, that he might have lost. But me being biased, I'm going to give it to him, right? Yeah. I mean, that's all of us, you know? And, right. So with that, with that, he wins, right? If If... That's how if, if that's how it plays out, right? If he wins five through twelve, and he wins fight, just like he did, right? So now, I mean, some of those rounds were fairly close, um, but you know, I like at the time, you know, at the time that the. I, you know, when the final bell rang, I, you know, was sitting sitting there going, I don't know. Well, I wasn't sitting. I was kind of walking around and pacing. And uh, I said, I don't, I don't know if he won. And I, it, it was, it was a shock to me because I didn't think that there would be a time that I ever had any doubt of whether or not that he won a fight or not. I just didn't think that would happen. Now, it is boxing, and there's another guy in there who is a great champion that's trying to win. You know, I I understand that. Um, but I have always, you know, felt that Andre was better than anybody else that I've seen at, you know, being able to take away somebody's strengths. Um to, and and just you know completely neutralize their game and and do what he wanted in there, um, and because you know he got he dug into that that deep hole, it, it really kind of changed the way he fought. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm happy. One, I can't say that he was a clear cut winner, uh, which is you know hey, which is why that the you know I think that the the next fight. Um, their rematch will, is so intriguing. Yeah, and I think you said it right. It's a close fight, and it w- I think it was the best fight of the year. It was real entertaining. It was, it was a good fight, and when it ended, I don't think anyone definitively, like you said, knew who won. Yeah, I, yes. I, you know, I, I agree with that. Now, you know, I, you know, you hear people crying about it and saying, oh, there was a robbery, and, you know, I mean... Look, close fights are not robberies, right? Now, you know, people may have felt that, you know, Andre lost because um, Kovalev was the aggressor um, and, you know, he was the one making the fight. And, you know, I... Now, look, I, I think it was a great fight because of the drama involved. Um... And you know how there was a huge momentum swing in the middle of the fight, 
you know, that, that made it a great fight. And, you know, how, how, you know, one guy, one champion battled back from adversity and was able to, you know, squeak out a victory. Uh, I, you know, I think that made it a great fight. Do I think it was, you know, the best fight of the year? I don't know. You know, I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not so sure. Um, I mean, it was definitely a fight that was, you know, uh, that you could see both guys in there thinking and calculating and trying to, you know, trying to figure out how to, you know, make the other one pay for, for mistakes or, you know, um, you know, trying to lay traps for each other. I, you know, it, 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 it was definitely a great fight in that sense, you know, it's, but there, there's people, you know, who want all action fights, right? And, and was there action? Yes. Was there, you know, hard punches landed? Yes. Um, but it, it wasn't a lot of, you know, real back and forth action uh, that a lot of times people look for, right? But Eddie, like, do you, you get know, that at the highest level? Like, do you get that, like, at, like, the top five level ever? Like, those all-action fights? In my opinion, one of one of the best fights I've ever seen, and I, you know, I, I wasn't there live, um, and it's, a you know, a two guys that, that, and I fought both of them, right? Barrera and Morales. That, their first fight is probably one of the, top three fights I've ever seen. And that was all action, back and forth. You, you thought one guy was on the verge of going down, and he would battle back, seeming like from nowhere, and landing big shots and stealing momentum. I mean, the momentum was going back and forth, you know, virtually in every round. So that probably you know, is definitely one of the best fights I've ever seen. And, and no, you don't get that often. I mean, that, that, you know, that, that's like a, a once in, I don't know, a 20, 20 years that, that you see something like that. Yeah. No. I, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, that, that's a fight. I, I don't know if you, if, have you ever seen that fight? Heck yeah. I had a black box. Okay. That was the black right. box here, Eddie. Yeah, 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 it was. <laughs> uh, the, the the funny thing was I had one of those too. I was I was living in New York at the time. We had Time Warner Cable, and I had, I had a black box as well. So, uh, uh, so yeah, I, I you know that that you know like those that fight was you know and you would think you kept thinking you know okay Morales is going down. Oh no, Barrera is going down. Oh Morales, is, and it was just back and forth action and crazy momentum swings every round, right? Uh, so, you know, I mean, it, w it wasn't that type of fight, but it was, you know, definitely, I think, for the, the boxing fan, right? Like, you know, a guy like, a guy like yourself or, yeah. you know, a person, a person like me. Yes, you know, we, we like to fight. Um, because of the psychology of it and you know we can see those guys thinking and stuff you know but like to the lay person or a casual fan you know you know it, there's too there's too many subtleties and nuances that they just don't get like explaining to someone who has never boxed or doesn't care about boxing what a feint is and why a feint is important is pretty annoying right right feint uh and you know just how they battling for position in the clinches and oh, you know, th there's you know a lot of, a lot of things that like you know casual fan just doesn't get and you know they they don't they don't they don't choose to, to even try to understand it right which is you know uh why people you know the, the people, the casual fans switched over. You know, a lot of them have switched over to MMA, uh, 
and they don't like MMA when there's when there's you know the grappling or the ground game, right? When, they it's, just, when it's technical. They, yeah, they don't like that. They they like it when there's you know when they're striking, when they're standing there and trading punches, right? And guys in MMA get knocked out, right? Because because one they're they're not they're not that skilled at striking, so they throw you know their their punches and strikes are you know as as big as possible and they're really wide and you know because they're not that skilled their defense isn't that good and they get hit with those shots with little gloves little gloves on and guys get knocked out and they but, also have different kind of bodies than boxers suspicious bodies I would say. Well, yeah, unfortunately, we're kind of, you know, I, I think that, you know, that is, you know, kind of crossing over into all sports, not just MMA. MMA. It's a little bit, but, well, I shouldn't say a little bit. We don't really know. You know, I'm, you know, you have your suspicions about certain people and, you know, you, you hope that that sport can, you know, kind of clean itself up, but. You know, I mean, it's in all sports, you know. You see guys getting, you know, ever since. Bonds. Yeah. Yeah, well, even before that, you know, he was, it just, it just so happens, uh, you know, that he's the most famous. And, you know, I mean, the guy was already great before it, right? So when he, you know, when he it, it allegedly. <laughs> we don't, <laughs> when he know, allegedly right? hit yeah. a growth spurt. And his numbers yeah. uh, spiked. And his head got humongous, right? When he got a so strength and that. conditioning coach, we'll say. Right. But, 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 you know, I mean, there were other guys. Um, there was a guy who batted lead off, you know, and this is before, a little before Bonds. I'm trying to remember that guy's name. It was Brady something, I think. But and his first name was Brady. But he was the lead off hitter for, for uh, the Orioles. Sizemore? And no, not Brady. Brady with the B. Oh, okay. Uh, I can't. I can't remember his last name. Anyways, he um, he's the leadoff hitter, and then you know he comes back one year, and he hit fifty home runs. <laughs> you know, and and you know, no, you know, no one said anything, but there had to be whispers. You know, in 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 baseball, how did this guy? You know. Never hit more than 15. Now he hit 50. You know, come on. There's something going on here. What and was so, it? huh? I was just going to, I was going to change the subject. I was just going to, because I don't want to get in trouble over any of this stuff because this gets weird. Um, Chappelle, seeing him talk to uh, Andre Ward, was that pretty cool? Yeah, I, you know what? I, and that was, you know, one of the few times that I uh, kind of I do stuff that I probably probably shouldn't do. Wait, Kaya, give me one second, okay? I'll be right there. I promise. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm talking to my five-year-old daughter that wants me to turn on Mickey Mouse. Give me one second, sweetie. I'm on the telephone and I'm making your pizza. One second. Um, um, yeah, well, you know what? I try my best to always, always be professional and, you know, not take pictures and, you know, post them on social media and all that other stuff. But I just couldn't help it. I'm such a, you know, I'm a big fan of, of Dave Chappelle. And I just thought, you know, his show was like the funniest show I've ever seen on television. So I just had to do it. I just snapped a picture and, it was pretty cool, and it was cool, you know, seeing seeing him come up and congratulate Andre and saying that he was proud of him, and, and you know, seeing someone from like the Bay Area that's like, you know, kind of is that's in with all these stars and famous people. It was, uh, it, you know, a guy from our backyard, and uh, and. and you know, it's something that that that, that I, I was happy to see and, and proud of. No, it's it's really cool. And what I like about Andre is 
he just works hard. He doesn't do anything else but beat people up and work hard. That he does. You know, I mean, he's one of the hardest workers that, that anybody will ever see. Um, and, you know, he, look, I, I tell everybody that, you know, you, you're only going to get out. Whatever you get put into the sport is what you're going to get out. And, and the same goes, you know, true for anything you do in life, right? If you, you know, put in half effort, you're going to get half result, you know? And, you know, people say, well, you know, I worked real hard and I didn't get the results that I, that I wanted. And look, you're not always going to get the results that you wanted, right? But you're going to get, you're going to get the results that, that you deserve most of the time. Um, you know, if you didn't get the results that you wanted and you still put in a ton of work, right, you, there's a couple things that you gained. You know, you gained a lot of experience, something that, you know, maybe one day you can pass on. Um, you know, and, I, and, and that is something that, you know, I'm speaking from personal experience, right? Yeah. I, you know, I, I put a ton of work into my career and, and, and when I was fighting and worked hard and, you know, was, you know, a very hard worker, um, and, yeah, I, you know, didn't miss training, trained, you know, went the extra mile, and, and did I win a world championship? No. And I had a chance to fight for it a couple times, and, you know, came up short, but, you know, now I'm in a position to, to pass, you know, what I learned from my experiences on to, you know, uh, a new generation of fighters. Well, I mean, that's that's really heartfelt, and I just like hearing that because that's something that I can personally take to heart, too, and think about. Um, are there any fights coming up that you foresee outcomes of or that you're interested in? J-Rock, Charlo, Walters, Lomachenko, anything out there you're interested in? Yeah, I'm interested in all of them, you know? Um I mean, I, I, yeah, I can't wait for the fight this uh, weekend with, you know, J, uh, Lomachenko and and uh, Walters. I mean, you know, it's an interesting fight. I, you know, I, you know, you, I, if you look at it on paper, you think that Lomachenko would win, and Walters is kind of, you know, not a skill, but he's big and strong, and you know, if he can you know, perform the same way Shalito did? Is that going to give Lomachenko problems? Did Lomachenko learn from that fight, you know, and, and you know, learn how to deal with the the constant pressure and, and you know, punching on the hip and pushing and clutching and grabbing, you know, can, can he deal with that better than he could in the past? I, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited for that. How do you uh, see I'm excited. It? What's your gut tell you about that fight? My gut, no, my gut right now. I keep going back and forth. I, you know, I, I think Lomachenko should win, right? Um, but Walters is so big, you know, <laughs> and I don't think like you know I've never met either one of them in person, but they look so. You know, uh, I mean, Walters just seems like a much bigger person. So, Mike you know, Reed like told a, me uh, Walters is bigger than me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's a big one thirty. Yeah. 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 Well, there you go. Yeah. You know, uh, and you know, I don't think Lomachenko is that big. I think he's what, like five four. No, he's about five six. He's five six, five seven. I've seen him. Okay. He's bigger than you'd think he is. He's about Nonito's size. All right. Well, I mean, Nonito's tall, though. You know, I mean, I mean not tall, but you know, for that si- for that weight, he's tall. Yeah, for that weight, he's tall, right? You know, which is why you know, especially when he was like fighting at one twelve, one fifteen, he had you know such an advantage because. You know, he was tall and could and could really crack. You know, uh, but as you know, he got up in the bigger weights. He you know didn't 
always possess such, such a big height advantage and you know the 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 punches you know while they're still strong they you know at at 126 and 122 he still was getting guys out of there but you know 126 you know the power wasn't quite the same as it was in in the slightly lighter weight um you know and and it yeah, I don't want to get into that, but yeah, <laughs> no, you're just breaking it down. That's why I like hearing from you because you're a real coach. You assess things. Uh, do you have any opinion on J Rock Charlo? Because uh, honestly, I'm kind of leaning towards Charlo, and I feel like I'm in a minority here. Hmm. Uh, you know, you probably are. I, you know, I. You know what? I I am going. To, I think J Rock's going to win. Actually. And you know maybe maybe I'm being biased because like I met J Rock a couple times. Oh, he's a cool guy. And I want him, and I want him to win. So maybe that might be partially it. But I like I just think that his you know his skill set is um, kind of perfectly suited to fight a guy like Charlo. Okay, and I take it you don't really want to break that down because that could also kind of give people information kind of on it. Um. Well, no, I mean, I just think that, you know, Charlo is a much rougher guy on the inside, and he throws, you know, he throws pretty good short punches, and I just think that, you know, on the inside, he's, you know, he's going to, you know, he might not be the stronger guy physically, but he's definitely going to throw the better punches on the inside. Now, from a distance, you know, he... You know, might not have you know the advantage in you know in speed, but you know I, I think he'll be able to close the distance and and you know get get to work on the inside. Mighty M- Melissa McMorrow is having her Bay Area homecoming December third. How's she looking? Uh, she looks good. You know, I'm we're gonna get a, get a little workout in later on tonight. Uh, my wife took one of our kids out for. Uh, to movie and dinner, so like normally we'd be working out in about an hour from now, but I, we're gonna have to put it off until about eight o'clock tonight. <laughs> so, and get some sparring in right before Thanksgiving, and um, you know, uh, she's looking sharp, ready to go. You know, especially since she just, you know, fought, and you know, in that fight she didn't fight particularly well. I mean, it's like, um, you know. In the past, like three, four years, one of her worst performances. And part of it, I think, was uh, you know being off for a year and a half. You know, so she seemed a little rusty, and it's hard for her to get focused um, in front of a, you know in front of a very hostile crowd in in Mexico City. And and the altitude really plays you know a part. People, you know, want to dismiss it, but I mean, you know, especially with someone who fights like Melissa, it's got to, you know, it's got to exert so much energy to, you know, to in order to win. Um, when it, it, it's hard when you're fighting somebody that's already acclimated to the altitude because that's where they live, right? So. It, um, it, she was definitely at a disadvantage there. So, hoping that she comes back and you know puts on a good performance and and um, gets back on the winning track. Is it is the altitude similar to Denver? Because I remember actually walking around in Denver and actually noticing the altitude just walking around. It's uh, two thousand feet higher. Okay. Yeah. So Mexico City is a little over seven thousand feet. And, you know, Denver or Mile High Stadium right there, you know, 5,280 feet. So, yeah, that's, so, a, that's a significant, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's worse, you know, not to mention way more polluted. And, you know, in, in the little arena they have there, people were smoking. And, you know, it just makes it, <laughs> there's a, you know, it just makes it tough, you know, so... 
That's a uh, whole new meaning for home hometown advantage. Right. <laughs> right. You know, you get, yeah, you, you get hometown, home country, home altitude. It's, you know, you got a lot of, she had, that girl had a lot of advantages over for that particular fight. So, Do you ever remember that Kendall Holt story where he fought a guy, I think it was in Panama, and they threw a, a like a soda at him in the ring and it was loaded? And he ended up no. losing the fight? Oh, I forget how that goes, but that reminded me of that. Kendall Holt told me that story once where he, he was fighting a guy and they threw a soda at him and they just called it as a break and he was like rocked from getting hit by a soda and he ended up losing the fight. Really? really? Yeah. A soda? And he got, and he got hit in the <laughs> head by... Yeah, he got hit or something. I, I can't remember the full story. He might It might have been like... I might be messing up the details. It might have been like he got dropped and thrown, someone threw a soda or something at him. But he got hit wow. with something... And they just kept it going. He's like, what the hell? <laughs> the ref's still I forgot, counting. I for, yeah. I forgot about that. I, it, it, You know, when I, when I fought in Mexico City, I fought uh, Morales, Eric Morales. I, as I was walking to the ring, people were throwing, like, Domino's pizza boxes at me <laughs> and, and, and throwing pistachios and pieces of pizza and stuff. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, that's I mean, it's like, you know, a serious, you're, you know, you're not just, you're not just fighting, you know, people booing and yelling at you. You're fighting in a serious, hostile environment. Yeah, I mean, it, so. it seems like if you lo- if you beat the guy, you're almost like you got to run out of the ring. You can't even, like, wait for the decision. Well, sometimes, so, sometimes, it, you know, I like. Generally, uh, in, in Mexico, people have always been real receptive to Melissa. They, they enjoy the way she fights and how she fights with so much passion. And, and she, um, you know, just is bringing it every second, right? So, so you know, they, they generally um, are, are, you know, really, like, nice and receptive after the fight. Give me one, before I let you go, I was going to say, give mm -hmm. me a crazy on the road when you were fighting, like a story about like a a hostile crowd or just like a weird fight experience since you had like such a career. Huh. Um, That's the weirdest thing that ever happened to me. Or even when you're traveling over the past couple of years, when you travel with Berto or one of these fighters, if there's been just something different that happened that sticks out? Well, I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's so many. I, 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 I can't even, I, it, well, I got a funny story. So, you know, they, it, I'll, I'll uh, I, this was, I was eight, I six and zero, oh, seven and zero. Oh. I think I was probably seven and zero. Oh. I think I, you know I was fighting in my first eight rounder, and um, I was. And the funny thing was I was telling John David Jackson this the other night uh, that you know I I fought on a, I fought on an undercard of his once, and he looked at me and he goes really and I said yeah in San Francisco, and he goes oh when I fought Pat Lawler. I mean, this is when he was the WBO 154-pound champ, right? And um, and that fight was on USA Channel. It was on Tuesday, Tuesday Night, Night Fights. Fights. It was on, yep, it was on USA Channel. And I was a swing bout. And Mark Gastineau was the first bout, right? So Mark Gastineau was supposed to blow his guy out of the water, Um and the, you know, I forgot who he was fighting, but the, you know, Mark Gasno hit his guy, uh, and the guy went down. And Marty Salmon, you know, the referee, Marty Salmon tells him, "Hey, this is California. If you don't, if you don't fight, you're not going to get paid." Right. So the guy gets up, and he beats the crap out of Gasno, and he wins. He won the fight, but it, it went for a round. And because of that, I didn't get on TV, right? <laughs> so you're thrilled. But, you're probably sitting back there smiling. 
Yeah, but but that but that wasn't that that's not the funny part of the story. So because I was a swing bout, and um, you know before the fight, like all the the TV guys, they come and you know they do pre-fight interviews. So while you're fighting, you know it's it, it seems like they've seen you fight before, right? Yeah. Um, so you know they come and ask questions and. And uh, so Sean O'Grady, who was the Tuesday Night Fight guy, he comes in and he asks me, he goes, hey, um, what's your name? I said, Eddie Clark. He goes, oh, he goes, you're Eddie Clark, huh? I said, yeah, why? Right. He goes, oh, man. People all over the country are talking about you. People in New York are talking about you. And I said, really? He goes, yeah. And I said, okay, oh, that's cool. That's nice to, that's nice to know, you know. And he, and he says, so... What do you know about your opponent? And I said, uh, I know he's an undefeated guy like myself. Um, and, you know, he, I, I hear that, you know, he's a tough fighter and he's going to come at me. You know, I, also, I hear, you know, a lot of, a lot of local people saying that this is going to be my first loss, right? But that's pretty much all I know. And then he says, okay, well, fair enough. What, 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 what's, your, what's your game plan for the fight? I said, well, my game plan is the same for every fight. Is you know, I, to not get hit. My, my game plan is to not get hit and hit him. And he goes, oh. I go, he goes, so, so you're a defensive fighter? I go, no, not necessarily defensive. But, you know, I, I take pride in, in being able to you know, slip punches and make people miss and make them pay for those misses. And he goes, oh, look, that's so, that's great. A lot of young fighters, you know, don't think about defense anymore. So let me tell you a little story, Eddie. And I go, okay. And he goes, my father, right? My father couldn't wait. He enlisted, he joined in the army in World War II. He couldn't wait to go over to Japan and shoot the Japs, right? He said, man, I can't wait. I'm going to go over and I'm going to shoot the Japs. But what he didn't realize were the Japs were going to be shooting back at him, right? And they're so, you know, that's the problem with many young fighters. They don't think about defense. They just worry about going out and punching guys, and they're not worried about what's coming back in return. And so he goes on for about five minutes. And then he looks at me and goes, hey, Eddie, you know, you got a real interesting look. You know, I'm one nationality. Are you, you know... Are you Samoan or Filipino, Sip Donner, what, what are you? And I go, I look at him right in the eye, and I said, I'm half black and half Jap. And he, and the whole room went quiet, and everybody looks at him, and he, he shakes my hand. He goes, okay, thank you very much. And he runs out of the room, and he goes down the hallway, and everybody started rolling, just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that that is a story and the fu- the funny thing is Jeff Gramoja he was you the know my cut man from yeah yeah the, uh, yeah Andy Ruiz this guy right well it used to be he is yeah 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 but he was my cut man for for most of my fights and he was there you know he makes me tell that story all the time every time I see him he makes me tell that story and Every time I see him, he goes, I'm half black and half jab. It's pretty, it's pretty funny. He's a character. Uh, yeah. He was a character. I like he he took Andy to the locker room. He's like, yeah, you can't talk to Andy yet. He's got to figure out what he's doing with his life. <laughs> <laughs> he took him to the locker room. And I was like, okay, now you can talk to him. But, um, yeah. Well, I appreciate the time, Eddie. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop that damn shirt off next week. I got to spe- – I've – Honestly, and this is the truth, I got a special shirt for you, and you're going to be the first one to get it. It's a special new kind. You know, Luke, I really appreciate that. You know, I always, I always wonder, hey man, I'm you know a local guy. When are you going to show me some love, like you show all the other local guys love? But you know, you're, you're better late than never. So, well, I'm I'm always you got to always remember I'm forgetful. I did. I think I've suffered like five or six concussions in my life, so I blame a lot of stuff yeah. on that. And you're also kind of intimidating, man. 
Sometimes you're a little intimidating. intimidating. You're a little intimidating Come sometimes, on, man. man. Come on, man. <laughs> don't give me, don't give me that, Luke. You look. I'm not gonna give you that emotional. Me. I'm not gonna give you what, that emotional what, answer. Look, when people see me, like you know, and don't know me, they go, "Look at that guy, man. That guy's like all of five foot six, 130 pounds, soaking wet, man. And what? How intimidating can I be? You're pretty intimidating. Mm. I like I like hanging around with you. I love kicking it with you. But I'm not gonna lie, out of anyone, pretty intimidating. I'd say you're top five because size doesn't matter for intimidation. Uh, no, I'm I'm I, I'm very approachable. I talk to everybody. Um, I think and, it's, you know I've seen you not, warm fighters up. I think that's what it is. I've seen you hit mitts with guys. I've seen big, stoic Russian or Ukrainian fighters talk back to you, and you'd be like, no, I'm not going to put up with this. So I'm like, yeah, you're kind of intimidating because you're like, you're going to stand up for yourself. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I, I might be a little dumb. I'm like, you know, I, I, it, put it this way, you know, Mike Perez, who, uh, you know, I'm helping train now. You know, he's humongous, right? And, like, he'll he'll mess with me, and I won't back down, and he just doesn't, under, he doesn't understand it, you know? <laughs> Tell you know it, how does that go? Because <laughs> Mike's a lot bigger than you. Yeah, uh, he always says, yeah, that's why he goes, hey, you're too fucking little to be fucking with me. I go, I don't care. I don't care, you know? I don't give a fuck, <laughs> you know? You want to fight, you might win, but you're going to get hurt. You know, so. How, how yeah. does Fonfara look, by the way? Um, you know what? I didn't get a chance to see any of uh, at the times that he sparred with Andre. So, I don't know. But, you know, I've, you know I hold mitts for him and see him hit the bag. And, you know, I mean, the guy's good, you know. Um you know, I'm excited to see, you know, if, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see if he can, you know, pick up on any of the stuff that we're trying to show. Can, can I translate uh, that? Because I think I, I'm going to say what I'm hearing, but you don't have to say it. If he can pick up on some defense. Um, no, well, no, not, not, not necessarily that. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, I mean, because, look, you know what, like, he's not, he, that's not what he is, you know, he's not going to be a defensive fi- a defensive fighter or, you know, I'm not going to turn him, you know, you're not going to be able to turn him into a defensive wizard, that's just not the kind of guy he is. He's an action fighter in your face, he's coming to throw, you know, you know, 80 punches around and he's trying to, you know, lay leather on you, right? Yep. Now... You know, the thing is, we got to, you know, kind of teach him to, one, set up his shots better, and two, kind of, you know, when he's finished punching, to, like, show him where he's open and, you know, why he's open and how to defend his weaknesses, right? So it's not, you know, I don't know if, I don't know if we're going to be able to ever, you know, get him to... Uh, you know, put any thought into into that, or as you know, I think it. You know, at this point of his development, it, I think it's more important to kind of make him just do it out of um, like repetition and drill, and drill it into him. So, so he, he's an instinctual. It. He's like an instinctual fighter. He goes off of like his where he feels in the ring. Yeah, well, yeah, and so, but, you know, what you got to do, sometimes people's instincts are wrong, you know, so, it, and so, put it this way, people first start boxing or, you know, whether it's, you know, to compete or take a boxing class or whatever, right, uh, your instincts when something's coming at your face is to close your eyes or turn your head or pull back, right, those are things you just don't do. You can't do that in boxing. So you're, those instincts in, in, you know, in a boxing sense 
are wrong, right? So you have to retrain those instincts. Uh, so that that is, you know, going to be um, the goal, I think, with him. Okay, and tell people about B Street Boxing Gym, and is it open on Friday? Um, no, nah, man. I knew what, I, since, like, I pretty much do everything in there, <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 if, if I can take a few days off, I do. Um, so I, I close, I close today at two o'clock. I'll be closed through the week, through the weekend. And, um, you know, the, I'll, I'm opening up at, at 5 a.m. on Monday. So, okay. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, B Street Boxing in, in San Mateo. My address is 223 South B Street, um, you know, uh, in, in San Mateo. And, and oh, go, go ahead, ahead, Eddie. I'd say it's, you know, it's, it's now it, uh, the majority of it, is, you know, our people are just coming in to either get in shape or get in better shape, stay in shape, or just kind of add to their workout. Um, uh, to you know their normal workouts or you know just trying trying something new, um, and you know we have a lot of tech workers and Sam Taylor has become kind of like a you know an, a, an extension of Silicon Valley. So you now we have you know a, you know a large percentage of, a, of our members are now like tech workers. So you know, it's kind of changed the dynamics of the gym a little bit, but um, it's it's been for the for the good so far. Yeah, it's a real cool gym. It always reminds me of like what I imagine a Cuban boxing gym would feel like. It's in a cellar. You see like some family members watching people boxing. You got small rings. It's cool. Yeah, you know, and and that's what I think that's what um, kind of the allure of it for a lot of people. I mean, there are certain people that just and come down. Like, oh, I can never work out here. This place stinks and you know it smells like sweat <laughs> it smells like hard work when you walk down those steps there's not a lot of ventilation or if any and um you know it's got low ceilings and it just you know the, i i i hear um you know people say well you know it took me a long time to finally walk down those stairs you know i was really intimidated by that um uh, you know, but when, once they come down, they find out that you know everybody's friendly and helpful, and and um, you know it's, it, it. We just you know want everybody to work hard and get a good workout and and reach their fitness goals. And you know, for the people that want to fight, um, you know, I'm you know I I am there. You know, if they if they want to fight, they let me know, and you know we kind of think of a plan for them. And, and and kind of lead them lead them on that way. Yeah, you could you could do a lot worse in the boxing game than having Eddie Croft as your coach, for sure. <laughs> well, I don't know. you know, hey, look, I, it's I and I I tell people this all the time too, right? Yeah, you know, a good trainer helps. You know, a good trainer helps, right? But you know, more than anything, it, it's a fighter. It's a fighter, right? Cause, you know. But a good trainer can't make poo smell like flowers, right? So, you know, if the guy can't fight, he can't fight. Now, you can you can improve certain things, right? But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's, it's more the fighter than anybody else because they have to be willing to put in the work, right? And if, you, if you're going to be a great fighter, not only do you have to put in work, but you have to work harder than anybody else, like Andre. That is how you become a great fighter. And right, so if you don't put in that type of work, you can't ever be great. Well, that those are words to live by. I'm going to I'm not going to give you the day I'm going to come and visit, but I'm going to come and visit your gym. What's the better time to come? Early in the morning or in the evening? In, in the evening is always best. In the evening, because I I became an early morning person now. I learned how to wake up at 5:15 every morning. So now I'm kind of running yeah. with it. When did you become the early? Was that boxing? Like I kind of love it because I can get all my work done before anyone's awake, between five. No, and 10. no, I've always hated it. It hasn't been until like the last maybe three, 
three years that you know I I get up I get up really early sometimes you know man it, there's a <clears throat> my barber in San Mateo he's got uh, Shane's barber shop in San Mateo and he's always he's super busy too right and uh, and he'll like I don't know maybe about two weeks ago I got a haircut at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> he met me at his, he met me at his barber shop. He had it. He had somebody else right before me. I come in. The first guy is leaving, and you know he cuts he cuts my hair at four in the morning, and then I go open the gym. 